injuries to the loading that trail side. We see Justin getting 90% of the pressure. He's moving slowly so often that center mass will follow center pressure when we move slow, but he's at 90% loaded into that trail side. So only 10% of pressure on his lead side. He's got 90%, he maxes that at P2, right? So he's getting that pressure into that trail side really early. And, and hence, you, if we watch Kyle Berkshire, Martin Borgmeyer, some of the moves that the guys do, Kyle loads fully on that trail, loads fully on the lead. Then when he loads fully on the trail, then he goes. He's preloading that. Um, even if we watch Rory McIlroy, if you take some and, and slow down that video, he makes up with the driver, he'll make a small little lateral shift that loads that pressure into the trail side. But again, that early load into that trail side is key. Average players, they tend to, hey, I gotta create this big weight shift. And they keep that party going on that. And we see the pressure, that center of pressure of that trail foot migrate to the lateral border. It's really hard to create a lot of force when that center of pressure is on the lateral border of that trail foot, what we call a negative shin angle. We can't create a lot of force. You gotta be really strong. So we're gonna be a much more advantageous position when if the shin would be neutral or even positive or tipped a little bit in. That's, uh, Greg and I will often use the cue. You know, we wanna feel like we get that pressure to the to the trail instep. It'll, it won't be on the instep. Most of the time it's in the center of the foot. But again, we wanna prevent that from getting to the lateral border. That's one of the biggest killers. They keep that party going here. Everything's gonna be late because they'll never, they'll probably never get to 50-50, even pressure distribution, or even where we like to see them, 60, 65% pressure into the lead at P5. Do we have a golf club here? Is there a golf club at the PGA show? <laughs> um, so let's, last thing, I think we got time for one more thing, right? So last thing I think we should talk about is the moment arm. Somebody asked about the moment arm. Let me just, let me, let me explain that real quick. This is the new Titleist driver. I wanted to show you guys this. Um, Okay, so just real quick so we understand uh, torque, right? Like I said, if I find the center mass here, right? Let's say this is the center mass right here. If I apply a force right through the center mass, it's not gonna twist, it just goes straight. If I take my center mass, uh, my force, and I apply it off the center mass, now it's gonna twist, creates a torque. Now if you wanna know how much torque you create, the torque is, let's say it's gonna rotate around here. Okay, let's say it rotates around here. Let's say I move one foot away from here, and I push with 100 pounds. How much torque is that? 100 pounds times one foot is 100 foot pounds of torque. It's the amount of force times the distance. That's called the moment arm. So if you want to create more torque, I got two options. Option number one, look like him. Go in the gym, get stronger. Instead of pushing 100, push 400, right? Now it's 400 times one, that's 400. You just quadrupled your torque. Or if you want to look like me, right? Bigger than him, no. If you want to look like me, then all you do is just go, instead of doing one foot, just push from four feet. And now four times 100, we have equal torque. So there's two ways I can increase my torque. I can change my moment arm, or I can change the amount I push. Does that make sense? Okay, so now, what's this got to do with golf? When you push into the ground, right, what does the ground do? Push back. Pushes back. How, depending on how you push on the ground, this ground reaction force can move in any direction, right? So this reaction force comes back into my body. If I, if I push to the point and I get my body over here where the ground reaction force is going right through the center of my body, what's my moment arm? At zero, it's going right through the center, a mass. If I push so that the ground reaction force is over here, well now the moment arm becomes really big and I can create a ton of torque here to create these rotations and twists and jumps. Does that make sense? So depending on how you push, I can literally move the ground reaction force. The biggest hitters in the world, they take the ground reaction force and they move it this way. It just increases the moment arm and they get their body over here. Get my center mass over here, there's no stacking over here with long drive. You get over here, get my center mass over here, get my resultant force over there. I got a massive moment arm, average, um, you know, amateurs like maybe four inches. I look at Jason's probably 14 inches, right? So just think about the multiplication here on, on torque. So how do I get my, how do I get my center mass over here? And how do I get my ground reaction force over there is what you should be asking, right? Getting your center mass over there is don't, don't go left early. That's, is that easy? Don't go left or Getting your, this is what I think most people have questions on, right? To get this to go down over here, you have to do two things. Push hard this way, 
creates the ground. If I push this way, the ground reaction force goes this way and do it early, like we talked about. That's the lateral. And at the same time, lighten this. L lighten this, because that'll make just this lay down over here. So how do I lighten this and push hard over here? Most players, let's look at vertical real quick. Most players, in the transition, I told you they're pushing hard lateral. What are they doing with their vertical? They're actually squatting, which is actually unloading. They're actually unloading the lead side, and then the lead side comes in. So they take this ground reaction force, they do this, and then it, then it comes in. So if you watch, show that vertical. Uh, sure, so what Greg was saying here, the uh, unweighting of the vertical, so we see this line going down at this low point, and we, as a percentage of body weight, he's only 69% of his body weight, so he's actually getting lighter. How's he doing that? He's sort of mitigating gravity, he's doing, he's bending the knees. At right? the same time, he's pushing hard lateral. Right, right. So, so, so this, go, yeah. and then we can see how he's tilted. This is our uh, global, ground reaction force vector or a resultant vector, what's happening between both feet, we can see that it's tilted towards the target. And then, you know, we extend that up, we calculate that, that perpendicular distance. That's what's creating this rotation in what we call frontal plane rotational force, frontal plane torque, but that's creating this positive, and that's a big driver in speed. You know, that, that horizontal torque contributes um, the, or the around the vertical axis and this frontal plane rotational force, both of those contribute to producing speed in plane torque. And uh, you will see what happens to Justin. As Justin starts moving, you can see how big this gets. This, this is a massive amount of frontal plane torque. What he's done, he's, he's moved that global vector. He's moved that, that, that resultant, like his, it, the maximum amount of uh, or the combination of the uh, the forces between both feet. He's moved that forward, but again, that distance between his center of mass and that force is a certain distance. And that distance creates that rotational force. That magnitude of that force combined with the distance from moment arm, that's what creates the torque. Guys, hopefully this has helped you kind of navigate all this stuff. This is just scratching the surface, obviously. First of all, I want to thank Smart to Move for actually bringing technology like this to light. It really helps us be able to understand what's happening. So please support companies like this that are helping us as golf professionals understand what's happening. And then most importantly, help me thank Jason Zubak for being a guinea pig for 25 years, letting us uh, experiment on him. So, Good. Good. And uh, please, uh, but uh, big thank you to Dr. Rose for, for his uh, generous amount of time. One of the very best in the world. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg.